them to shame that have not? What shall I say to you? Do I praise you? In this I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and giving thanks broke and said, take you and eat. This is my body which shall be delivered for you, this do for the commemoration of me. In like manner also the chalice, after he had supped, saying, This chalice is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you shall drink for the commemoration of me. For as often as you shall eat this bread and drink the chalice, you shall show the death of the Lord until he comes. Therefore, whoever shall eat this bread or drink the chalice of the Lord unworthily 
shall be guilty of the blood and the body of the Lord. But let a man prove himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that chalice. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh judgment to himself, not discerning the body of the Lord. Therefore are there many infirm and weak among you, and many sleep. But if you would judge our, but if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But whilst we are judged, we are chastised by the Lord, that we be not condemned with this world. Well, let me just make a let me just make a brief comment on that reading. Why don't you, you can sit down? Yeah. Let me just make a brief comment on that epistle reading. St. Saint, Saint Paul is writing that letter to the church at Corinth. And evidently, a lot of abuses have arisen in the church in Corinth when they celebrate, well, the Lord's Supper, when they celebrate Mass, when they celebrate the Lord's Supper. Evidently, the, uh, and particularly, Presumably, as part of the celebration of the Lord's Supper, uh, there was, uh, uh, I, I, I suppose, something like a potluck supper after it. And St. Paul is commenting on what takes place during that uh, uh, potluck supper, that, uh, that those who had much put to shame those who had little. And it's quite obvious that they don't understand what the Eucharist is all about. If they understood what the Eucharist was about, they wouldn't put others to shame, but rather they would be, they would come to their uh, aid in one way or another. Huh? So what we, what, we have, what we have in this brief reading from the first letter of the Corinth, uh, from the, uh, of St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians is, is the fact that abuses began to arise in the early church in conjunction with the celebration of the Eucharist. And St. Paul is, uh, uh, is adamant about erasing the abuses that had arisen in that community, and of course not only in that community, but any other community. Because you must remember, very often when these letters were were written to a various churches, like for instance, this letter went to the church at Corinth. The, the, uh, the custom was that the church at Corinth would share with the church, say in Ephesus or some neighboring church, the letter that St. Paul had said in hopes that if St. Paul wrote to them, that they would also share uh, St. Paul's letter with uh, the church at Corinth. Huh? So there's sort of an interchange of these epistles that took place within the early church. And so, so Paul is, is, uh, is referring to the abuses in Corinth, but there probably could, could have been abuses in other communities as well. So it's a rather interesting uh, uh, little uh, excerpt on the uh, on the uh, celebration of uh, of the Eucharist in those giving communities, and then the uh, and then the life of that community, and how they failed to exercise Christian charity when they needed to. Okay, the Gospel, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Before the festival day of the Pasch or the Passover of the Seder, Jesus, knowing that his hour was come, that he should pass out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And when supper was done, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him, knowing that the Father had given him all things had given him all things into his hands, and that he came from God and goeth to God. He rises, he rose from supper, and laid aside his garments, and having taken a towel, he girded himself, 
And after that, he put water in a basin and began to wash the feet of his disciples and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. He came therefore to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said to him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou shalt not have any part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He that is washed needeth not but to wash his feet, but is clean, holy, and you are clean, but not all. For he knew who it was that would betray him. Therefore he said, you are not all clean. And then after he had washed their feet and taken his garment off, being sat down again, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me master and Lord. And you say, well, for so I am. If I then, being your Lord and master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that as I have done to you, so you do also to others. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Because we must remember that our Lord lived at a time when people wore sandals in a very in a very dusty and sandy area and so they their feet would become uh, kind of grimy with uh, with sand and dirt and so on and so forth and so one of the greatest hospitalities in the ancient world was whenever you became a guest at a home was for the for the host to offer you at least the facilities to wash your feet so you'd feel comfortable during the visit. Uh, and all the grime would be gone, huh? And that's part of what's going on here. Uh, one of the greatest acts in the ancient world, uh, one of the greatest acts in the ancient world was to supply people the means whereby they could uh, cleanse their feet and feel comfortable while they were visiting. And then once they left, they would uh, get more, more sand and dirt in, onto their feet. Anyway, the, uh, it's important to note the contrast found in the scripture readings for this evening. His last Passover supper, uh, which was his last Passover supper with his disciples, his apostles, the contrast between these readings is underscored all the more when we note that there is no account of the institution of the Eucharist in St. John's Gospel. There is, a, there is an account of the institution of the Eucharist in the other Gospels, but not in St. John's. There's a, a special reason for that. Now, each of the Gospels gives us an account of the Last Supper within the larger context of the Passion. None of them attempt to give a complete account, and consequently, we can hardly make an exact reconstruction of the Supper, of the Last Supper. With all Jesus' words and actions, these accounts are somewhat different, which is easily explained by the fact that each of the evangelists drew on earlier oral traditions which incorporated them with an eye to his own specific uh, interest in writing, in writing the gospel. Now, St. Paul's admonition, as I've already said to the Corinthians, regarding the flaws in their assembly, led him to remind them of what he had delivered to them, the tradition that he himself had received from the Lord. St. Paul reminds the Corinthians what he passed on to them. He calls it, even in the year 57 AD, the tradition I received from the Lord. 
It is the account of the Last Supper, such as it has come down to us today in the Eucharist. We do just what the first Christians did in memory of the Lord. Centuries have passed since then, but through the Eucharist, the same sacramental rite they observed, we are like them, contemporaries of Christ, whose body we share and whose cup we drink. Each time we share in the new covenant proclaimed by the prophet Jeremiah and instituted by Christ, we commu communicate in the redemptive sacrifice of the suffering servant. At the same time, the Eucharist celebrated until he comes is an expectation of the Lord's glorious return. And thus the Eucharist is at the center of the mystery of the church and of the faith. The way the community the church celebrates it brings judgment on itself. And because the Eucharist forms the church, it reveals to each and every community what it is and what it must become as it celebrates the mystery of faith. The gospel for this day, as you just heard, is St. John's account of what Jesus did at the Last Supper. And I quote, before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass over from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. Now the solemnity of these words cannot keep but catching our attention. It sets the tone immediately for the extraordinary character of what follows. We are urged from the very first to listen carefully to the account of Jesus washing of the disciples' feet. And it is hinted that this is a good deal more important than a mere example of Jesus acting as an unexpected, in an unexpected manner. Certainly, one can draw a lesson about humility and service from Jesus' example, but we should not imagine that we have understood the story so quickly. The scene of the washing of the feet is first and foremost a revelation of action whose meaning is not immediately apparent. Jesus said, what I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Jesus' remark to Peter is an invitation to the Christian today to meditate on the Passion in the light of Easter and Eucharistic faith. Unlike the other evangelists and St. Paul, St. John, as I've already mentioned, gives no account of the institution of the Eucharist. Nevertheless, Eucharistic themes abound in the Gospel of St. John. In fact, one often has the strong feeling that St. John has transcended something uh, he preached in a Eucharistic liturgy. Such is the case here. At least the Holy Thursday Mass is but the context for understanding the story of the washing of the feet. Now, remembering what Jesus did at the Last Supper, one expects St. John to recount the institution of the Eucharist. Instead, we read the story of the washing of the feet, a solemn rite enacted by Jesus. As, as, and as the reading said, he rose from supper and took off his outer garment. He took a towel and tied it around his waist, and then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the apostles' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. Now, how could one not be astonished and intrigued by this? What does it mean? Well, Peter reacts, reacts with, in his customary manner, Master, are you going to wash my feet? You will never wash my feet. You, he will not allow the Lord to humble himself. He does not understand that the action has a hidden meaning. Jesus responds, unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Leads him to think of it as an act of purification, 
master than not only my feet, but my head and my hands as well. But the meaning of Jesus' action goes beyond simply an act of purification. So washing their feet during a supper, he took up, he took with them before the feast of the Passover, Jesus showed his disciples what they must do. I have given you a model to follow, to imitate. Now you can understand it, for we have seen how he loved his own to the end, even dying for them, so that they might have a share with him in his inheritance after he passed from this world to the Father. This is a revelation in action of the mystery of God, uh, of the mystery of Jesus and his Passover. Although St. John the Evangelist does not use the word here, the washing of the feet can be understood as one of the signs that stake out the fourth gospel and a sign of the passion. And thus we see that Jesus removes not only his clothes, but his very self, taking on the form of a slave. And it is thus, as St. John insists, that he appears as teacher and Lord, who draws all to himself. Jesus performed this sign during the Last Supper, just before his Passion. St. John does not say so, but his hearers, especially when they celebrate Holy Thursday understood that this was when the Eucharist was instituted. With this in mind, we can see how the sign of the washing of the feet complements what St. Paul and the Synoptics say about the institution of the Eucharist. It is the sacrament both of the love of God and Christ and of the bond of charity between Christians. The fact that this liturgy for Holy Thursday contains St. Paul's institution account and St. John's washing of the feet supports this connection. This annual celebration of the Last Supper at the beginning of the Easter Triduum is an invitation to deepen our awareness of what the Eucharist is and what it demands as the sacrament of the Passover and the new covenant. Now, let me just add to that. Of course, the day is Holy Thursday, and it is normal on this day in each diocese for the bishop to bless the holy oils. And we need to be aware of that fact that, in, that the, uh, the oils which are used for the, for the various sacraments, chrism, holy oil, the oil of the sick, they are blessed together uh, on this day in most uh, dioceses uh, so, that, uh, and, uh, so that they will be available to be used uh, throughout the year for the uh, sacramental needs of the faithful. And then of course this is the day also in which the which our Lord instituted the priesthood. So there are, Holy Thursday, there are many, many things uh, uh, that are taking place in this great feast. The institution of the Eucharist, the institution of the priesthood, the, uh, and then in the, in, the, uh, in the custom of the church, the busting of the holy oil, and so on and so forth. So this is an important day, and I suppose that's, uh, indicated by the ringing of the bells during the Gloria. Huh? It's, a, it's a very special day. And in fact, it's, it's, it's a special day that even the church rubrics say that even if you not have, don't have a high mass, you should also incense the altar at the beginning of the service of the low mass. I didn't do it simply because I, it's a little difficult for me to, uh, to handle a thurible and uh, but uh, the altar should be incensed and, uh, and uh, as part of the service to indicate the solemnity of this day. This is the beginning of what we call the sacred triduum, the sacred three days, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and then the Holy, and, and then the Holy, Holy Saturday, those 
three important days. So, uh, with those thoughts in mind, let us rise and make an act of faith. Credo in unum deum patrum omnipotentem, factorum et celem et terum visibilium, omnium et invisibilium, and in unum dominum nostrum Jesum Christum filium Deum Jesum, et ex patronate ante omnia secula. Deum de Deo lumen de lumine, Deum vero de Deo vero, genitum non factum consubstantia alum patri, percum omnia facta sunt. Qui propria nos hominis et propria nosum salutum de celis de celis, et incarnatus es in spiritus sancto ex Maria Virgine et homo factus es. Crucifixus et iam pro nobis et Pontio Pilato, passus et sepultus es, et resurrectus et die idea secundum scripturas, et descendit in celum sedet ex non patres, et iterum venturus et cum gloria, iudicare vivas et mortua, cuius venginum et fines. Et in spiritum sanctum dominum vivificantem, qui ex patre filio que procedet. Qui cum patre et filio simul adorate et cum glorificatur, qui locutus est per profetas. Et unam sanctam catholicam et apostolicam ecclesiam, confite una baptisma in remissione peccatorum, et expecto resurrectionum mortuorum, et evitum petuli seculi. Amen. Dominus forbiscum, Oremus. Dexter the Domini Fetcher Virtutum, Dexter the Domini Exaltabit me, non moriar sed vivam et narabo opera Domini. So she be sanctified to any potent. Sancti Macarata Mostiam, quam equin genius famous to us, offer to be a vivo et vero. This year, in fact, many of you speak in the salute of Ibidem Eterno, Amen. I just want to have two hosts here, and I only have one. We have to have that. Uh, that's okay. Amen. Ipse tibi quesimus domine, sancte patro omnipotente cerne deus, sacrificium nostrum reda le ceptum, qui discipuli suis in sui commemorazione hec fieri, odierne traditione monstravit. Jesus Christus, filius tuus, Dominus noster, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum, Dominus proviscum, sursum corda, gratias agamus Domino Deo nostro. Vere dignum et justum et secum et salutare, nos tibi semper et ubique gratias agere, Domine sancte pater, omnipotente cerne Deus, Qui salutum humani generis in inno crucis constituisti, urunde mors oriebatur, in de vita resurgeret. Et qui in lignio vincebat, in lignio quoque vinceretur per Christum Dominum nostrum. 
per quem majestatem tuum laudatio adorant dominationem tremem potestates, celi, celum qui fituus ac beatus seraphim, socia exultatione cancellebant, cum quibus et nostras voces ut admiti ubias deplicamur, supplici confessione dicentes. Sanctus, 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 dominus Deus sabaot, plenis in celi et terra gloria tua, hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venis in nomine de domini, hosanna in excelsis. Te iso comitisse me pater per Iesum Christum filium tuum dominum nostrum, supplitas rogamos ac petimus. Utia ceptas habeos de benedictas hec dona, hec mundra, hec sancta, sacrificia illibata, in primus quod hivi offerimus per ecclesia tua sancta catholica, quam pacificari custodile, adonari et regi de generis tu orbe terrarum, unicum famul tuo papa nostro, antisti nostro, et omnibus orthodoxis, atque catholis pathologiae, fide e cultoribus. Me metu domine famulorum, famadrumque tu aurum. Et omnium circumstantium quorum tibi fidis cognitet nocte devotio, pro quibus tibi ofelimus vacu tibi offerent hoc sacrificium laudis, pro se suvisque omnidorum tiani animarum suarum, pro spesa lutus et incomitatis sue, tibi cabotus sua, etendo Deo vivo et vero. Comunicantes et diem sacratissimum celebrantes, quo dominus nostro Jesus Christus pro nobis est traditus, Sed et memoriam vedrantes in primus gloriosis in bebidinus Mariae, genetricis iustum Dei et Domini nostri Iesu Christi, sed et beatorum apostolum ac matrum tuborum Petri et Pauli Andreae, Iacobi, Ioannis, Iacobi, Ioannis, Tome, Iacobi, Filippi, Bartolome, Matei, Simonus et Threi, Lini, Cletis, Clementis, Sisti, Cornelii, Cipriani, Lorenti, Crisagoni, Ioannis et Pauli, Cosme, Damiani, and Onium Sanctorum tuorum, Quorum meditus pediibusque concedas, ut in omnibus protectionis tuae muniamur auxilio, periundum Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Hanc eci tu oblationum servitutus nostri, tele condifinit quaesum sanus vocatus et cibias, ofelium familiae tua quam tibi ofelimus ob diem, in qua Dominus nostri Iesus Christus tradit de cibuli suis corporis et sanguinis sui misteria celebranda, Quaesimus Domine ut placatus Egipias, dies qui nostus in tuo pati disponas, atque abitentes damnasi nos Egipi, et in electorum tuorum iubias gregi numerare, per Christum Dominum nostrum. Quam oblationis des in omnibus quaesimus benedictam, adscriptam, oratum facet et generis, with nobis corpus et sanguis fiat, delicis mi fidi tui Domini nostri Iesu Christi. Qui pridie quam pro nostra omniumque salute pateretur, hoc es hodie, acepit panem in sanctas ac frenelabus manus suas, ed elevatis oculis in celum a te deum patrem sum unipotentem, tibi gracias argens benedixit, fregit, dedit credit shipi sui digens, a cibite de manducate, Ex hoc omnes, hoc est enum corpus meum. Simini mora postquam cenatum est, a cipi ente tunc peccarum calicem, in sancta sacmene lavas manus suas, item tibi gratios argent benedixit, dedit quelli cipi sui dicent, a cipi te te bibite ex e omnes. Hic est enum calic sanguinis mei, nove et eterni testamenti, mysterium fidei, qui pro vobus abo multus effunt etur, in remissionem peccatorum. Et quotius cumque ficeritis in mei memoriam facietis.
unde e membru Domino Savitui, se plebs tu santi urti vidi rui dominati. Tam beati passione tenc non, ed a reverse resurrectione, sed in celus goes the chantion of the famous, pe cae maestatus tue, de tuis donis actantis, hostium purum, hostium sanctum, hostium immaculatum, panum sanctum vitae tene, et calicem salutus perpetuae. Super crepopitio accidentum of the species of Nerus, et a chapter have a discretion in Arsas Munus, justi abel, a sacrificio patio acre nostro abrihe, et cotibi opta sumus et chelsus melchizedek, sanctum sacrificio memacolotum hostium. Supplicus te rogamus omnipotens Deus, iube hec per fede per mano sancti angeli tui, et sublim volta ai tuum in conspecti divina maiustatus tuae, ut quod quod. Ex lac altares, Participazione sacra sanctificio corpus et sanguinam sum serimus, omni benedizione e grazia e viamo per unum Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Nobis quoque, memento etiam domine famulorum, famulumque tu aurum, qui nos precis erum consigno fidei, et dormiunt in semno pacis. Ipsis Domine, et omnibus in Christo quescentibus, logum refigere ludis et pacis, ut in dudios deplicamur, pe unum Christum Dominum nostrum. Amen. Nobis quoque peccatoribus, pamelis usimus in miserationum tuanum, sperantibus patum alicum et societatinari, cuntuis antis apostis matilibus, com juvantno Stefano Martia, mano by Alexandra Marcellino Petro, politis et perpetu agon lucicia, Oni besanti suis in tukom nos consortium, non es de mediti sed benie equesimus lagitu admite per Christum Domino Rostrum. Per quem ec omni nomus semper bona crea sanctificas, vivificas, benedicis et prestos nobis. Per ipsum, ecum ipso, ed in ipso, es tibideo patro in ipotenti nutati spiriti sancti, Omnes honor et gloria. Per omnia saecula saeculorum. Oremus precepti salutatibus moniti et divina institutione formati audemus dicere. Pater noster qui es in celis sanctificetur nomen tuum adveniat venium tuum. Fiat a voluntas tua si in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quodilianum de nomus hodie, et dimite nobis debite nostris, si quiere nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et de nos ducas in tentati onem. Liebe nos credimus omnivantibus mars pitetibus et futuris, et in tecidente beat gloriosus et bebege tici Maria, con viatis de pastis petru et paluat, qua entraer omnibus sanctis, da papisis quadrum in diebus nostris, ut opa misericordia tui iuti, et peccati semme sempre liberi, et ab omni petepatione securi. Periudem, Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regna, et in unitate spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Pax Domini, sit semper vobiscum. Hei comitio cascas corpus, et non ceres quis entimi nomen vidum eternum, amen. Agnus Dei, qui tolus peccatum mundi miserere in obis. Agnus Dei, qui tolus peccatum mundi miserere in obis. Agnus Dei, qui tolus peccatum mundi. Dona nobis pacem. Domini es Christus. Obis pacem. Obis pacem. Peccatum nostri Christi. Obis pacem. Tu peccati peccati. Iusus regnus in secula seculorum. Amen. Domini es Christi. Pini Dei, 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 Per mortem tuum vivificata divina hoc sacrum corpus et sanguinum tuum, ma mundi visitati with faith in the virtuous malis. Et fac me tui semel helen mandatis, et ate in numquam sepulari permitas, qui comi orum leo patri spiritus sancti virus regna, in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Perceptio corpus tui domini Jesu Christi, quod ego in dignum summa de persumo, non mihi pobenet in judicium et cantonationem, Sempre tua pietata prosa, amici, copia di me e dem, vivi 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 di me e dem, 
per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Panem celestem accipiam, et in nomen Domini invocabo. Domine non sum genius, in Christi. Domine non sum genius, Domine non sum genius.
Dominus Jesus postcom chinavit, cum discipulis suis lavet pedus eorum, et aelis cite, cites quid fecem vobis ego dominus magister, exemptum dedi vobis, ut et vos ita facietis. Dominus vobiscum Ordemus. Refecti et vitalibus alimentis quesumus domine Deus nostre, ut quod tempore nostre mortalitatis exequimur, immortalitatis tue mudere consequamur. Per dominum nostrum Jesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitati spiritus sancti Deus per omnia secula seculorum. Dominus forviscum ite mita es. Pacha tibi sanctus iuris me. Fitte me sanctus pizza abicustum dominus nostrum. Amen. Et benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Dominus forviscum. In itium sancti evangelii et secundum iuannem. In principi erat verbum verbum erat apodem, et Deus erat verbum hoc erat in principi apodem, omnia per ipsum factum sunt, et sine ipsum factum est, nihil quod factum est. Et ipsa vita erat vita et lux hominum et lux in tenebris lucet, et tenebris eb non comprehendeunt. Ud homo misus et Deo, cui nomen erat Giovanna, sic men in testimonium, ut testimonium peri beni lumine, omnus credere et pedrum. Non era illi lux, era testimonium per i veri lumine, era lucti vera, quae illumina omnum hominum veniatum in mundum, in mundo era, et mundus visum factus est, et mundus em non condovit. In proprio venit, et sui em non cipevum, quo auto et cipevum eum, dedi de disposizione in filius dei fili, his cui gratis nomini eius, qui non ex sanguinibus, neque qualitati carnis, neque qualitati viri, sed ex deo nati sunt et et verbum caro factum est, et habitavit in nobis, et vinimus gloria meus, gloriam quasi unigenti, a pate, pleno gratiae, et et veritatis. Deo gratias. You got the incense? 
and went into the humeral veil. Hold me, and, and I, I tell someone to bring the humeral veil. It's over there someplace. Okay, and then to bring us to the, to bring that we have that procession to the altar. There's the humeral veil there. Okay, that's good. Uh. Now you have to help me down. I'm going to take the veil off. You can have it. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Ooh. Tantum ergo sacramentum. What's the matter with this thing? Okay. Okay. Wait, and then we genuflect. <laughs> and then go to the altar for the stripping.
prayer for the... Okay, great. Okay. And you can start strip. You can start stripping the altar. Divisarent si vestimenta mea, et supervesta mea miserent sortem, Deus, Deus meus, restrice in me. You can, you can, you can strip the altar. Those of you who have the Psalm Deus Deus Meus in your missal, you can recite it. 